Hi there. Um, you notice for the title of the session, I had lots of words in there. Um, and you could look at this as collecting a set of buzzwords to help you understand what's going on. But I think having the right word as shorthand for things is really important. It's only when you have that word you can then use that as, as part of your meaning. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are now if we didn't have words like blog that suddenly appeared from nowhere, but crystallize an idea. So a really important word here is flow. This is, this is what I got from Dana's talk um, yesterday, was that the, the expressing the connectedness through flow is really important. Um, think about how you're connected to everything else and when you're in this flow state, absorbing what's going on behind you. Um, Dana put it as you're living inside the stream, adding it and consuming it and connecting to the rest of the world through, um, through flow. So that's the, the sort of first important way to think about. The next thing to, to um, connect to here is to think about faces. Faces put next to the words, like I just did with Dana there, is a very powerful way of getting people to contextualize it. When you see a face next to a, 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 a phrase, um, that person is being connected with that in your head. And a very large part of our brains is devoted to connections between people about understanding and trusting them in that, um, in that way. And that is something that we can't really replicate inside the computer because there's this set of trust relationships inside our heads that we map through faces into the world. So when you have a face next to information, that's a really powerful way of contextualizing it for you. Um, the next word here is fatic. Fatic means grooming, social connections, communication that doesn't actually have any meaning, just has social meaning. Um, and this is the common complaint about Twitter and Facebook is it's just people talking about their lunch. But if it's someone you care about, you care about what they had for lunch, and you can feel this ambient intimacy flowing to you through all these fat, little fatic connections. Um, and that takes me to the idea of following. The, this, this is this, the subtle difference between a social network that has friends, where you've both agreed to be friends, and following where you can follow one person um, without having to ask their permission. You can just connect to them and see what they're doing. And this leads to the, the ability to, use, uh, to connect to those people and, and sort of get a feeling of what they're up to without having to actually be part of their lives. Um, Dana referred to this as parasocial. This is a way you can connect to the, the, the sort of famous person without them necessarily knowing about you. But the, um, the asymmetry of that also means that it's actually comfortable for somebody to be famous in that space because they don't have a million people poking at them. They just get to see the subset that they're interested in. Because that leads us to the idea of publics. Notice I say publics, not public. The point is that there are many publics. Rather than there being one public space, we're all connected. Each of us have our own publics that we're serving um, and listening to. Um, again, Dana's discussion of this is, 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 is focused on the teenagers. Um, their idea of the public is not about everyone. They want publics of their peers. They don't want creeps and parents in there. They want to be connected to the subset of people that they're interested in, not, f not to the whole world. Um, and with these, with these soft tools, we can actually construct these um, overlapping publics. Um, and the other thing we get from this is, is what I call mutual media. Um, because each of us reads some stuff and then passes other small parts of it on, we're all effectively filtering the world for each other. So as we're connected to people through this, we can draw information in and feed the information back out again to others, um, each of us adding to the amount of meaning in the world. Um, and the, the fact that we have these semi-overlapping publics means that um, it's much harder for one person to disrupt them. Um, the other thing is that you would think that if all these, all these things are distributed, it's very hard for information to move through it. It's all atomized and dissociated. But actually, that's where network theory comes back to. The idea of the small world network, um, Watson Strogatz's work, is that um, you don't have a random network with people randomly connected. You don't have a very local network where everyone's in a grid and only talks to the person next to them. You have a sort of grid-like network with a few long distance connections, and you suddenly find that information can move from one place to another very, very quickly. And this is, this is something you see with um, the way that Twitter and social networks work now is that you send an idea into it, the ripples spread out, and, and then the uh, things come back to you, or a small ripple in one corner can spread out to the whole world if, if that's interesting enough. Um, and the, the, the big thing that I want to talk about here is outgroups. Um, this, this is a phenomenon that we, that we see, which is that it's very, very easy. 
for people to decide that someone else is not like them, they're different, and they, they should be shunned and talked about. This is the, the minimal group paradigm. And thanks to Rashmi for giving that term. That's exactly what she says. The smallest possible difference will be magnified into in-group and an out-group. Um, and my, my favorite way of look, thinking about this is, is this um, cartoon from XKCD, which draws the, the social web as a series of different countries. This is actually a really powerful metaphor, because if you think about it, if you look at the sites on here, you will know some of these countries, you'll have visited them, but the other ones will feel alien and strange, and you, you're not sure you want to go there. You might go there on holiday and peek, poke about, but you, it, it doesn't feel comfortable. Um, and it's, it's once, once you notice that this, that this is happening, um, I started collecting um, the way people talked about this. This is Oliver James in the Times. He says that a follower on Twitter is someone who is young and feels marginalized, empty and pointless. They don't have an inner life. So he's clearly outgrouping anyone on Twitter. Um, Michael Wolf in Business Week, if you're in MySpace now, you're a cretin. And you're not only a cretin, you're poor. Nobody has beyond an eighth grade level education on MySpace. It's for backwards people. You can hear the hate. You can hear, you know, you can hear it. it and, and one more. Pete Cashmore of Mashable talking about Orchid. Google Talk we integrated with the pages themselves, making it super easy for Orchid's Brazilian drug dealers to text messages and voice chat with each other. <laughs> so somehow it seems okay to do this in this world, whereas it, when, you, when you draw it back to the real world, that, that would, you, know, you would be thrown out of society if you're talking like that. Um, because it's very easy to find these differences um, and, and, do that, and you know, shun the, the rest of the world with that. So the challenge is how do we bridge back over those differences? Um, and that takes me back to the tumbling, the, um, the stuff that Heather was talking about just now. The, the whole goal of that is to find people and connect them, bridge across these divides, and find ways to create the conversation. And this is an another word that I had to um, discover, if you like, because it was, um, I spent a long time trying to find a word for this and eventually discovered it in this, in this Yiddish word, because there isn't an English word for this. There isn't a way of saying, I want to be the person that starts the conversation, that sets the tone and connects it. Um, it's only, it's only it, the, 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 the other term I found that was close to this was geisha, but that doesn't translate to American at all. Um, because the point is there are people whose um, mission, whose job is to connect across these different communities, to bridge the outgroups and join them back together again. Um, and some of these tools and technologies that, that we have can, can work to do this too. So, the interesting thing to think about um, with the systems that do this, if you think about the way Twitter works, um, you're mostly looking at a set of people that you already know, that you've chosen to follow to make sense of, um, and that affects you. Suddenly you have a public that you're getting nice things from, and you can respond to that, and it changes the way that you interact with it, it changes the tone that you have, because you're talking to these people that you trust. And even though your stuff may be fanning out to more people than you're seeing, it still shifts the tone in that direction. Um, and the interesting thing that I see about um, the new Twitter retweet thing that's been a lot of fuss about this week, people are getting very scared by it because these alien faces are appearing in their stream um, because somebody's retweeted somebody else. Um, and I think you, know, you could change that so you can say, this was retweeted by someone, here's the face of the person who, who sent it to you as well, and that's okay. But there may be something interesting going on here. Because those are retweets because someone thought they were interesting, you're seeing alien faces that are saying something interesting because your friends thought so. So it may actually be expanding your in, your in group to a, to a broader out group and actually bridging the connections across the different um, sides. So the, 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 the goal of, of talking through these words is not for me for this to be the, the be all and end all of this. What, I what I'm hoping is that you'll pick up on these words and go and explore them and look them up and unpack the concepts in more detail. Um, and that you'll be able to um, help, you know, help understand how these social science concepts can apply to the computer science worlds that we're building um, and make sure that it's not just um, another synthetic world that exists on its own terms, but actually bridges back to um, human connections in, in the way that Heather was talking about earlier. Thank you. <laughs>